Praise the Lord, everyone. Shall we start? I hope everybody's in. Glad to see you all. May God bless you all. The time we're going to spend in the presence of the Lord. Let us give a reverence and an honor in the respect of the Lord. So, <clears throat> as God made this day for us, that we may all rejoice in him, glad in him. Because if we spend time with him, he's in our midst, as he promised. So, before we start with the prayer, let us read one verse so that will be encouragement to all of us. Uh, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4, we all read together. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are rich, and the honor and the life. You see, the beauty, the humility of the Lord with the fearness, when we honor him, we'll be riches in Christ, rich in Christ. And we'll be blessed and have a wonderful everlasting life. God has promised us. So therefore, we will be under the submission of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> All right. Let us look unto the Lord for his help as we start a few, uh, I think an hour time we spend here, the Lord may help us singing and also hearing the word of God. The Lord may anoint the brother who gives the word and uh, hide him behind the cross so the word may be released from the throne of grace. Let us look unto the Lord for his help. O loving Heavenly Father, merciful and grace God, we thank and praise you, Lord, for this evening we come into thy throne of grace. We humbling ourselves, we lifting thy name, Lord, because you are a King of kings and the Lord of lords. As we reminded, Lord, today is the Lord's day. Oh, Lord, Father, we have you have given us a wonderful time to be in thine house, to spend time with thee, Lord, fellowship with thee, fellowship with one another. As we reminded, Lord, before the foundation of the world, you have chosen us, Lord. We have not loved thee, but you have loved us first. Father, we thank you for the rede redeeming us. Sanctification, Lord, washed us, cleansed us, make us to be an inheritance of Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, Father, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you, Lord, as we also gathered. Youth meeting, Lord, Father. Thy children are joined, O oh Lord, Father. You be with us and talk to us, Lord, that we may hear thy tender voice. Prepare our hearts, O oh Lord, Father, so that we may learn of thy word. As we read singing, we may bring melodious noise unto thee. It may be acceptable unto thy sight. O oh Lord, give us a blessed time. Those who are still waiting for to join, Lord Father, we pray that, Lord, they may also quickly join so that, Lord, we may all unite our hearts together. We may bring our honor together. We thank and praise you. Once again, Lord, sprinkle your precious blood upon this uh, Zoom application. It may not go any problems, Lord, but we are looking unto thee. You are our author and finisher. We thank and praise you. Committing ourselves to thy loving hands. Pray with thanksgiving. Precious and worthy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hi, let's just uh, get into a time of worship now. Um, I, I'm doing a couple songs that I hope you guys can join along with. Um, Let's just get our hearts prepared to worship. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, and I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am, it's who I am, it's 
To glory, you are. 
my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you won I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated With the one who has conquered it all Now I can finally see it You're teaching me how to receive it So let all the striving cease Oh, this is my victory And you are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you won Oh, I am who you say I am You've crowned me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated With the one who has conquered it all Thank you, God. You are our champion. Oh, you fight for us. You fight for us. When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me When I lift my voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me When I open up my mouth Miracles start breaking out I have the authority Jesus has given me When I open up my mouth Miracles start breaking out I have the authority Jesus has given me Oh, you are my champion And giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you've won Oh, I am who you say I am You've crowned me with confidence I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated With the one who has conquered all Oh, I am seated in a heavenly place With the one who has conquered all God, we just bless your name, Father. We know that you're the God who fights for us. We know, that God, that in your word you've said that we just have to stand still and just see you take over, take over and move, that we just only need to be still. So I ask, Father, that you would cause us to just let you be and take over and take control. We give the rest of this time to you. We pray that our worship would continue in receiving the message. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you, Sister Nikisha. Uh, God bless you. And um, I hope everybody sang with you along because it is encouragement and all, uh, for the songs. Father is a good father. He's our defender. He battles for us. He comforts us. He loves us. He will provide everything that we ask for it. So may the Lord bless and use you continually. And also now we are about to hear the word of God. Pray in your heart that the Lord may speak to us in a newness so that we may be empty, filled with the Holy Spirit of God. So, Brother Koshi, please uh, <clears throat> take over. And yeah. um, so, thank before, you. Before we uh, introduce Brother Steve Koshi, oh. I just wanted to say one word, uh, a, mi a minute about Nikita. Sure. Nikita, uh, who has helped us in singing and leading us in worship in the past, um, you know, is very special. You know, she has lost her dad a couple of years ago. And uh, her and her mom and her brother are so strong in the Lord. And it's so heartwarming to see their faith and their love for Christ. And, you know, it truly encourages us, um, those of us who are blessed in the Lord in so many ways. So we do thank you, Nikita, for being a light in this world. And we do pray that the Lord will continue to bless you. What a beautiful voice God has given you, the talent uh, there to shine. So God bless you and may you continue to bring honor and glory to him. God bless you. Thank you. So she's also studying um, her master's in speech pathology. So keep her in prayer that the Lord would enable her to be successful in her studies as well. So now uh, I just want to take a moment to introduce this young man, Steve Koshi, uh, who's here to share the word <clears throat> with us. Um, he's very young. And as you can see on his face and uh, a joyful young man. And, you know, his story is that He's going to share some of his testimony, I hope, in, in, in the uh, word that he's going to share. But um, just briefly, he's here from Dallas. He's moved to New York as of January of this year. And um, the Lord had called him into going into full-time ministry, leaving um, the things that are of this world. Uh, he has made a decision and committed himself to serve the Lord. So he's here under the guidance and leadership of a pastor, Finney Samuel, um, here in Long Island. And he's doing an internship with him that he could be trained um, under his guidance. So we're so grateful to see this young man. And uh, we pray that the Lord would bless him tonight as he's going to share the word from, from, uh, for us. Thank you, Steve. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Uh, Thank you, Abby Uncle, for that introduction. I really appreciate it. Thank you all uh, for having me here uh, tonight. It's a blessing to be here to get um, to study the Word of God um, together. It's truly a blessing for me to be here. Um, as as you heard, my name is Steve Koshi. Uh, I'm originally from Dallas. I moved here in January of this year. Uh, so very new to New York, still learning how to drive here, still learning the new food spots and all of that. Um, but it's been a blessing to be here. I'm at Cornerstone Church, formerly known as IPA, now known as Cornerstone, Pastor Finney Samuel. Um, just learning under him, working with their youth um, in all the different departments of the youth. Uh, it's been awesome to be there. It's been awesome to see how God has moved in my life and just stepping out in faith to do um, what he has called me um, to do. So um, just a little bit of backstory to my life and how I've come to this point of wanting to be in ministry. Uh, in 2021, I had just felt God kind of nudging me in the direction of full-time ministry. And at the time, I wasn't sure about it. I didn't really want to do it. Um, but I prayed and I said, God, if this is something you really want me to do, then it needs to be very clear. So God, would you make it very clear to me? Would you give me a sign that this is from you, that this is for me? And, you know, months of praying that, I ended up leading worship at, at a church service, and afterwards, a random guy came up to me and said, hey, um, can I speak to you? I said, okay, sure. We went outside, and he said, um, while you were leading worship, God told me to come tell you that you're called for full-time ministry. And I, I remember this, this feeling of shock, and, and I, I cried, and I said, you have no idea how much that means to me. I've been praying about this for months. And so this stranger got to <laughs> pray over me. We hugged. And I went home and I cried again, told my mom. Um, 
But again, that that night itself, I felt doubt again that maybe this is just a coincidence. Um, maybe this guy just, you know, liked how I led and felt like telling me that, God, you're going to have to show me again. And so then a few weeks later, we'd get a guest pastor who would come to our church to speak. And at this point, I'm, I'm on stage playing bass. Uh, we're getting ready for altar call. He's praying over people at the altar. And then at one moment, he turns around and he points at me. And he says, you, the boy on the base, there's a calling on your life for ministry and don't back down from it. And I remember again, just sobbing, crying, thinking, wow, God is really speaking. And people would affirm that for, for weeks and months. And, and I remember I told my mom, mom, I'm dropping out of college. I got to do this. And my mom said, absolutely not. You're going to finish your studies and then you can consider ministry. I said, okay. So I finished school uh, a year ago, uh, last May, and, you know, thinking again that I'm just going to get a job, I'm going to work, save up some money, get my life going, and then eventually down the road, I'll study, do ministry. Um, but God had other plans. Um, I realized this opportunity here at Cornerstone, and again, I I never really wanted to live in New York. My whole life, I've said I will live anywhere but New York. I don't like New York. I like Southern suburban living. Uh, so I really didn't want to come, but I applied anyways. And the church, you know, brought me out. I got to meet everyone. Um, and I prayed about it. And I just felt confident that this is where God wanted me to be. And honestly, after being here for, I think, eight to nine months now, uh, I'm sure that that God brought me here for a reason, that, that he has purposed and planned for all of this to align the way it has. Um, and for me to be here um, speaking to y'all even. Um, so I just want to thank you again for this time. We're going to get into the word. But right before that, I, I just want to share a story that has led me to um, this word or this message for today. Um, as all of you know, uh, a lot of us grew up in church. Um, I grew up in the Malayali Pentecostal church. And something about the Malayali Pentecostal church, I love all the people. I love their hearts to serve. I love our churches. But one thing that I struggled with as a teenager and growing up in the church is I felt like everyone around me had it all together. And then there was teenage Steve Koshy who was struggling, who, 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 who had these things going on in life. And I thought, man, all of these people at church seem to have it all together. And then there's just me. And I have all these problems and all these struggles. Something is seriously wrong with me. And so I walked around thinking, man, what is this? I, I can't, I, I didn't feel comfortable to open up. And, you know, eventually over the years, it got better. I met young people uh, who would share their stories. But in 2021, so this is post-COVID, everyone's kind of trying to find community again. I found out about this organization or this group called Regeneration. It was at an American church in Dallas called, called Watermark. And Regen is basically where a group of people come together you talk about what you're going through. What is it you're struggling with? And let's pray. And then eventually you're led into a small group and it's a year long uh, program. So I only got to do it for a few months because of scheduling, but it's every week for a year. And so I remember my first day walking into this massive American church, pretty scared, but eventually it put you into a circle of guys. So I'm sitting here in a circle of men of all different ages. I'm, I'm, I'm saying like people who I would call uncle, people who I would call chachin or, uh, you know, people even younger than me in college. And we just begin to go around and each person just begins to open up about what they're going through in life. You know, older people were talking about marriage problems or younger people were talking about even things like same sex attraction, alcoholism, all of these things. And, and I'm sitting there thinking, first of all, this is crazy. Like, wow, these people are being so open. This is crazy. But another side of me was thinking, man, this is what community looks like. This is what fellowship and small groups and, and our friendships are supposed to look like. A group of people who love one another enough to say, hey, what are you going through? And let's pray. And after each person went, the group would pray over that person. And I thought, man, this is awesome. This level of transparency and vulnerability is, is what God desires for the church and for small groups and, and for life groups and for community. 
is for us to be able to come and, and be vulnerable and open about what we've been through, about what we're going through. And, and we get to pray over each other. And so that leads me into the passage for today. We're going to be in John chapter five. So if you have your Bibles, uh, Bible apps, if you could turn with me to John chapter five, verses one through 16, and I'll read it. John chapter five, verses one through 16. It says, after this, a Jewish festival took place and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. By the sheep gate in Jerusalem, there's a pool called Bethesda in Aramaic, which has five colonnades. Within these lay a large number of the disabled, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been disabled for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and realized he had already been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to get well? Sir, the disabled, disabled man said, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I'm coming, someone goes down ahead of me. Get up, Jesus told him. Pick up your mat and walk. Instantly, the man got well, picked up his mat, and started to walk. Now that day was the Sabbath. And so the Jews said to the man who had been healed, This is the Sabbath. The law prohibits you from picking up your mat. He replied, The man who made me well told me, Pick up your mat and walk. Who is this man who told you, Pick up your mat and walk? They asked. But the man who was healed did not know who it was, because Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, see, you are well. Do not sin anymore so that something worse doesn't happen to you. The man went and reported to the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. Therefore, the Jews began persecuting Jesus because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. Um, let's pray together and then we'll get into the message. Father God, we thank you again for this time, Lord. We thank you for your word in John chapter five. God, I just pray that as we as, as I speak today, that your word would come alive off of these pages. Lord, that you would reveal the mysteries hidden in your word. God, that you would even take me off track of what I've prepared, if that's what your spirit desires. Would you lead this service, Lord? Come and speak to your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we're here in the story, and Jesus is entering Jerusalem, and he's passing this gate, and there is a pool there called Bethesda. So around this pool is a lot of lame, disabled, sick people. And they hang around this pool because there was some sort of myth or understanding that at some point this water will begin to stir up. And if you can get to the water before the others, then you might be healed of your sickness. Um, so we see that Jesus sees this man who's been there for 38 years. So this man has been laying there, disabled, paralyzed for 38 years. And that number really stands out to me because it's a, it's a very long time. Um, I'm 24 years old. So 38 years of struggle is a long time, right? I often think that us as believers, uh, we've, we've grown a little soft, right? I, I, I think I go through things for a few days and I'm thinking, man, God, why have you forsaken me? You know, just last week I had a headache that lasted about four days. And I was praying, God, please take this away from me, right? So this guy is going through this sickness, this disability for 38 years. And he's laying by this pool. And, and Jesus walks up to him and Jesus asks. Jesus sees that he's been there for a long time. So I'm sure Jesus has passed this place a few times, maybe seen this man a few times. And he walks up and he says, do you want to get well? Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's a pretty interesting question to ask to a man like this. Do you want to get well? Um, because isn't it pretty obvious that if a man was laying there for 38 years, sick, disabled, had no hope that he would want to be healed? If I was the man, I would be thinking, um, sir, look at me. Look at my situation. I've been here for 38 years. Of course, I want to get well. So why would Jesus walk up to this man and ask him this question? Do you want to get well? And I think, I think if, you, if you understand the heart of Jesus, he often loves to hear people's faith, right? When people come to him and say, if you speak over me, I will be healed. If I could just touch your, your, your robe, then I'll be healed. 
right? Jesus loves the faith of people. So Jesus wants to hear from this man, his response. What is his response to this question? So, do you want to be healed? And, and we'll get into his answer and why it's it's important. Um, but, but the first thing I want us to think about is that God desires to hear from us. Jesus, the Lord desires to hear from us, right? Uh, you, you know, it would be so easy to just close our eyes and pray and say, God, let your will be done. Amen. That that's an easy prayer. Just, you know, God, I trust you. Just do, do what you think is best. Let your will be done. Amen. But when, when it comes to praying and, and asking God the desires of your heart, what is it that you want? Do you want to get well? What is it that you want? It draws us closer to the heart of the Father. It it creates a relationship between us and the Lord. That it's not just God is just in heaven and he's this God up there and I'm just down here. No, I get to talk to God and I get to bring my requests and I get to tell him what is it that I need? What is it that I desire from him? What is it that I'm hoping that he does in my life? What is it that I'm hoping he does for my family, for my friends, for my church, for 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 my ministry? And it, and it draws us to the heart of the father. And I think Jesus comes to this man and he asks, do you want to get well? Because he wants to connect with this man. He wants to hear his response. He wants to know what is it, what is it that's in his heart, right? And we, and we get to this man's response um, in verse seven. The man says, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I'm coming, someone goes down ahead of me. So we see that this, this man's response is, I've tried, right? I've done what I can. I've tried to get well. The, the question is, do you want to get well? The man's response is, I've done what I can. I, I wait for this water to stir up. It's been 38 years of this. I've done what I can. I've tried to get there before everyone else. I've tried to have someone come and take me there before anyone else. And it hasn't worked. I've done everything I can. And I, I think this is often our response. Our response is whenever something happens in life, we do whatever we can. Let me do what I can to fix my situation. Let me find someone else to come and do it for me. Let me find the people around me to help me through this. And it's almost like God and prayer becomes our last resort rather than our first response. That, if we're, we're struggling, so let me just do what I can in this situation. Let me just try to get myself to the water when it's stirred up. And, and when our heart should be, Lord, I'm going into a, what, what, whatever it is, a tough class. Lord, I'm walking into the gym right now. That, that's relatable for me. I pray before I walk into the gym. Lord, I'm walking into the gym right now. Would you be with me as I walk into the gym? Help me to have good encounters with people. Or when you're walking into school on the first day, say, Lord, I need you. I need your help to get through this semester. I don't even know if the class is hard yet, but I'm going to pray and welcome you into this situation. And so like this guy, we often do everything we can. And then when we can't do anything, we say, God, please show up. God, please do something now. I've tried everything I can. And so that's this man's response, which I think brings us back to why did Jesus ask this question? I think he wanted to hear that. He wanted to hear, I've done everything I can. I've been waiting for someone to take me to the pool. I've been waiting for someone to come and change this situation. But this man had not met Jesus yet. He had not encountered a man named Jesus yet. So Jesus comes up to this man and he says in verse eight, he says, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And instantly the man got well, picked up his mat and started to walk. Now, again, we, we go back to the 38 years, right? A long, long time. A long time of trying to figure this out himself. A long time of trying to get himself to the water. To this moment of Jesus says a few words. And instantly, he's made well. Healed just like that. With just a few words. In just a, a few moments. 38 years of suffering to be healed in just a few seconds. It's, it's 
it's such a beautiful story. And, I, and I'm imagining for this man, it's this surreal moment of, man, I've been waiting for so long. I have been struggling and striving to, to, to get myself out of this situation for 38 years. And now this man named Jesus comes and he just says a few words and instantly I'm healed. Instantly I'm made well. And I, I think I want to be very specific in, in what Jesus says. And I, I think Jesus doesn't say anything on accident. He says everything for a reason. Jesus says, get up. He could have stopped there. But then he says, pick up your mat and walk. And instantly the man got well. He got up, picked up his mat and started to walk. And I think if, if I were this man, I would want nothing to do with my mat. The thing that I had been lying on for 38 years, it probably smells. Um, it, it's probably a big reminder of what I've been through. I want nothing to do with that mat. Jesus, what do you mean pick up my mat and walk? How about I pick up the mat, put it in the trash can, and then walk? How about that? How about I move on from this situation? How about I accept this healing and just move on with my life, this new life that I've been given? But Jesus was very specific. He said, pick up your mat and walk. And I believe that the mat is a representation of, of our story, of our testimony, that, there, that there's something that Jesus wants you to carry. What is it that Jesus wants you to carry with you? That, that this mat would represent the 38 years of suffering. And, and for this man, it's probably a reminder. And that might be really hard to be reminded of your past to be reminded of that really hard thing that you had to go through. But God can use it. It becomes your testimony. It becomes your story. It becomes the thing that you use to minister to other people. And there are people that need to see the mat to know that they can be healed. There are people that need to know where you've come from to know that they can get through their situation too. And so Jesus tells this man, take up your mat. And walk. And what if God intends for us to carry our mats as well? What if God intends for your story to not be something that you just leave in the past and you walk on with your new life and it's awesome? Uh, God did it. God healed me. But let me just move on from that. I don't want to be reminded of that. No, I, I believe that. I believe that every single person has a unique story and a unique testimony for a reason. Your mat is different than the person next to you because you're going to encounter people that they may not. And your story may impact them in a way that theirs may not. And I think often, especially in church culture, we're very embarrassed of our mats. We're very embarrassed of our past. We're very embarrassed of the things that God has brought us through. And, and once we're through it, we don't want anyone to know. We don't want anyone to hear about what I've been through or the things that I've done. We just want to live that new life and, and just pretend like we have it all together. And, and I just I just don't think that's what God wants us to live or how God wants us to live. I believe that we go through these seasons, that we go through these trials so that other people can hear our testimony. Because think about it. When you're ministering to people, it, it's great to share the gospel. Let me tell you of a God that loves you and sent his son to die. But there are some people that you're going to meet and you're going to need to share your story. Can I tell you of how Jesus changed my life? Of how Jesus turned my life around? And that will minister to them way better than any theological presentation you could come up with. Any pamphlet you could bring. Any, uh, I, I've seen like gospel cubes. I don't know if y'all have seen that. A gospel cube. <laughs> okay. Um, but anything like that. Your story is so much more powerful. Your story, you have the emotions. You remember what it felt like. This man remembers what it felt like for 38 years for nothing to come out of it. And then for a man to walk up and in just a few words, I was healed. In just a few moments, I was healed. 38 years of suffering to lead to a few seconds of healing of this man named Jesus who saw me at my worst and he healed me. And so I'll carry this mat with confidence. And he does because this mat is now a symbol of this man's healing. This mat that he laid on on the, that, that represents his brokenness, his sickness, his hopeless situation is now the evidence of what he's been brought out of and what Jesus has healed him from. So what is it for you? What is your mat? 
what is the thing that God intends for you to carry that you've probably stowed away in a closet somewhere or you're hiding under your bed? What is it for you? Reflect on that today. What is the thing that God has brought you out of that you've probably never said to anyone? And, and I guarantee you there's people in your life, there are young people that need to hear about it. There are young people that need to hear your story, uh, to know that their situation, that they're not alone in it. And so this brings me um, to the next portion, right? He, he runs into uh, these Jews and they say to him, this is the Sabbath. The law prohibits you from picking up your mat. And he replies, the man who made me well told me, pick up your mat and walk. Who is this man who told you to pick up your mat? Oh, yes. But Jesus had had fled uh, from the scene. Um, so this reminds me of religious folks, right? Or people you'll encounter that that maybe make you feel like your mat's just, you're not supposed to carry that. You're not supposed to bring that around. Don't bring that in here. Don't bring that into our church. Don't, don't, don't tell our young people about that. Oh, we don't want, we don't want them to hear about that. When in reality, man, we need to hear these things. We need to hear what God is capable of. We need to hear what Jesus can do in a situation. And so, so these these Jewish men, they, they represent almost like churchy religious people who, are, who who tell you that your mat's just too gross. And we don't we want we don't want to hear about that side of your story. When in reality, your story is very important. There are things that 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 you will go through that other people need to hear that, that they can be healed, that they can be brought out of. And, and, the, and this part of the story is kind of funny to me because they ask him, uh, so who is this man? And, and Jesus had fled the scene. Um, but this man was so, you know, in love with Jesus, right? This person who had healed him that he went, goes and finds Jesus, figures out that it's Jesus, then goes back to these guys and goes, Oh, by the way, his name is Jesus. That's the man who healed me. Like that was this guy's heart that this person changed my life. I'm going to go and tell everyone about it. I'm going to go and tell everyone what he's capable of, who it is that made me well. And so they tell him, you're not, you're not prohibited to carry that mat. But he says, the man who healed me told me, pick up your mat and walk. So I'm going to carry this thing with confidence. I'm going to carry this thing everywhere that I go. And he, and he even comes back and says, it's actually Jesus who healed me. And so my, my heart behind this, my, my heart for the church and for young people is that we would just carry our testimonies with, with, with confidence, that we wouldn't be ashamed of the things that we've been through, that we wouldn't hide the things that God has brought us through, but that, but that we'd be confident to present it. Like, hey, everyone. This is what I've been through. This is what God has brought me out of. And he can do it for you too. You know, a few years ago, I, I felt like sharing my testimony on my Instagram. And I typed it up. And I remember sitting there in front of the typed up testimony and thinking, I could never post this. Like, what are people going to think? Like, what are people going to say? And I, I, I just, I, I prayed that day. And I just felt so led to do it. I, I, I posted it and it was just me being vulnerable. This is what I've been through. This is what God has brought me out of. And it was hard for me to do. I did it. And I think two years later, I had run into this, this young guy um, at, at our church. And uh, I've never met him before. He came up to me. He says, hey, I know you. And I was like, I, I don't know you, but nice to meet you. And he said, Dude, I saw your testimony on Instagram and it impacted my life more than you'll ever know. And I was like, what? My, my testimony on Instagram that I posted years ago, you, you saw it? And he's like, I was going through so many of the same things you mentioned. And I just remember I, I almost cried and I said, dude, that's awesome. Praise God. Praise God, because I almost didn't even post that. I was almost too ashamed to even put that out there. So I don't know what it is for you. I don't know what it is that God has brought you out of, but I want to remind you and encourage you that there's people that need to hear it. There are people that need to hear what you've been through. And I, and really quick, I'm, I'm short on time, but I, I, I remember the story of, of Thomas, of doubting Thomas. 
And Thomas didn't believe that Jesus was alive. But Jesus comes and he says, look at my hands. And he shows him the scars. And Thomas needed to see Jesus' scars to believe. And, I, and I, I truly believe that there are people in your life, there are people that you're going to encounter, there are young people that you're going to mentor and disciple that need to see your scars to know that their wounds can be healed. And so show them. Show them with confidence. Say, this is what Jesus has brought me out of. And it might be messy. And it might sound not very churchy to say, but I, I, I believe that God brought me out of it. Jesus brought me out of it. The man who made me well told me, pick up your mat and walk. So let's be a, a church. Let's be a group of young people that are just passionate about the gospel and unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ and what it's done for us and unashamed of the things that God has brought us through because there are people that need to hear it. Let me pray that we would do that. Father God, we thank you again for this time. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the story of this disabled man who you healed and he carried his mat and walked. Just in a few moments, he was healed. And God, I thank you for every testimony and every story of the people on this call right now. And God, I just pray that you would help us to be people who are unashamed of the gospel that we would be people who are unashamed of, of the things that you've brought us through. And God, I pray that we would carry our stories and carry our testimonies with confidence and share it with everyone that we encounter. And that you would use those stories, those testimonies to bring people to know you. God, I pray that you would get the glory out of the things that you've brought us through. Use us in that way, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and lead us to the people that need to hear about you. We love you, Lord. Help us to love you more. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Koshi. Thank you for encouraging all the, um, the life of your testimony. And it's very important that it's true. When we interact with people around us and make sure you tell about your testimony, how God has saved. As we see the disabled man, 38 years he's been suffering, but Lord has uh, pick them up in a second, you know. So likewise, we are also maybe um, stuck in sin for many years. When God relieved us, He made us to be deliverance. That that good news to be to others, it inspire, and then they might be uh, drawn to the cross. Yes, thank you, and God bless you, as you are committed also to be a full time minister. May the Lord use you mightily. Credit goes to Him only. That's what uh, we always. Uh, uh, give back to the Lord only because he belonged to him. The glory belonged to him. May God bless you, brother, and lead you, guide you. So now, quickly, we're going to have a um, testimony from Albany. Brother Tony, he's, uh, is he ready, Brother Sam? Yeah, oh, please take over. Yeah, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Heyman Krishan Machala. So uh, usually people call me Tony. It's a short name, so... Even my family calls me Tony. So I recently finished my master's from SUNY Utica. So currently I'm an OPT looking for a job. So I'd like to roll this up in a quick manner. I, actually, what brother Steve Koshi told, I it hit me hard. Like I almost felt that he was talking about me because uh, last month we went to a youth camp. Uh, uh, unfortunately, brother John missed it because of his leg uh, injury. So we've been to Bethany Church. We had a sleepover over there. And after that, we went to Georgia. We had a long drive. It's almost by the grace of God, we finished it. Like we never felt it like a, it's a long ride. So we reached there. After going there, usually I'm an introvert. I, this is my first time speaking to a large group of people, uh, sharing my things. So usually I'm an introvert. I used to... Most probably, I used to talk with my mom. Even to say something to my dad also, I'll use my mom as a channel. to. Uh, so, after going to the youth camp, it transformed me a lot. Like a lot. Uh, like exactly what Brother Steve Koshi told regarding the testimony. I mean, I'm not going to mention the name. A sister told her testimony to us, me and my friend. We were really like encouraged by her words because she uh, literally shared everything, what what she used to do and how God changed her and what we need to do. She uh, suggested us to start reading Bible, like 
i mean whatever you do just spend a time uh, spend like an hour with god uh, like uh, reading old testament in the morning new testament in the evening just like talking to god that encouraged us a lot so youth meeting made a huge impact in my life before youth meeting i used to be okay actually i'm a i mean i don't know if it is correct or wrong to say this i'm a third generation christian like what i personally believe was like someone who comes to faith from a non christian family the first generation they are like totally into god they will worship like everything but second third okay they'll feel it like okay it's a tradition to worship they'll not wholeheartedly what i personally feel even because i am into that category but after going to the youth camp that transformed me a lot usually for 3 or 4 hours listening to a message i feel like oh my god that's more than enough for the day but at that youth camp from morning 7 o'clock till night 10 or 11 sometimes we spent time with god we spent with more youth like there were around 150 people uh, i mean we even performed a skit we even won two prizes in quiz and uh, in the drama and i mean in the skit that's how i was really shocked even my sister got shocked are how would you perform in, in front of those many people i mean yeah the youth camp made a huge impact in my life and uh, yeah while returning uh, we were driving the car it's around morning 5 or 6 i was talking to my friend i just told him that yeah from from now onwards i'm going to read the bible daily i'm going to pray i want to change myself i mean i want to do at least because of uh, not because of the sister testimony but yeah i was really encouraged so i'm going to do these things even my friend told me that okay let's try doing this sir immediately after telling that uh, approximately in around 5 to 6 minutes i received an email regarding my opt i was waiting for my opt since like 2 weeks it has to come on june 19th but almost uh, i received it on july 26th so literally after sharing with my friend after 5 minutes i received an email that your opt is uh, successful and you will be getting it by one week all glory to god because i was been waiting for two weeks but uh, when i have when i gave myself to god like when i have decided to pray when i have decided to read bible daily when i gave myself to lord he he did miracles like in span of 5 minutes that encouraged me a lot so yeah even there were many things uh, from my childhood uh, if i keep on saying every day every day is like a struggle for me i don't know i used to be a i mean i don't talk with people a lot i mean i'll 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 take a group of people and i'll only hang out with them and i'm not an extrovert person but after going to the youth camp i was encouraged i was talking to people i was involving in church activities i was able to speak with you guys right now usually i'll just off the video and i'll just uh, speak for a few seconds and i'll move on but the, all glory to god because of him only i'm able to do everything and and i strongly believe that i mean yeah i don't know i strongly believe that god is going to do a great things for me and hopefully next year i'm going to come back with a greater testimony to share it with you guys so right now i'm going to uh, read a bible verse so in the quiz competition we we won two prizes like second in quiz and second in the drama in the skit presentation so many of my friends got the prize the prize which i got there is a bible verse in the two prizes i got it was the same bible verse i mean i got the same verses on the two prizes so let me share it with you it's proverbs 1 8 and 9 my son hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother for they will be a graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck so this verse this encouraged me a lot because till that time i used to believe that okay i can do things on my own or else i can let's let's see how chalta how life goes but after that i started believing that okay i need to listen i need to listen uh, i mean hear the instruction of your father and mother doesn't mean it's my own father or my mother any elder i got it sometimes it might be my friend sometimes it might be someone anyone who gives me an instruction i should obey them and i if i truly Uh, i mean uh, what should i say if i truly believe in that 
uh, suggestion and try working on it. That helped me a lot. Whatever it might be, even regarding my studies, even regarding, I started listening to people from that time only. Till that time, I used to take this from the uh, this year and I'll leave it from this year. So at that from that moment, I started believing like, okay, let's take time, time, be a good listener, so that after listening to things, I'm uh, I keep on applying them to my life, and suddenly, I'm seeing the change. So right now, uh, I believe that I'm on this, I'm on the right edge. So hopefully by next year i I'm, uh, i'm very sure that god gonna do great greater things for me so i'll come back with a greater testimony and uh, yeah thank you so much for giving me this opportunity brother tony thank you god bless you may god uh, open up more so that you may be interact with the people and sharing the word of god as you reminded you know honoring elders and father mother is very big commandment in the bible god he demands us that we must do it then only we will receive the blessings and the and the life extended also so may god bless you brother um <clears throat> sam you have time to do the um kahoot yeah. no no we we said not no kahoot oh not kahoot okay yeah. so, yeah. Oh. Today, today we decided not to do so Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right, all right. Okay, no problem. So, uh, why don't you, uh, Sam, you pray and uh, end up with the prayer? Yeah. yeah, you can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah. Our most loving <clears throat> Heavenly Father, gracious God, mighty God, God and keeping God, thank you, Lord, for Thy great love and purposes in our lives. Thank you, Lord, today that you spoke through my dear brother <clears throat> Koshi. Thank you, Father, for using him. Thank you for the commitment, O oh Lord, that he was able to make. Yes, Father, <clears throat> many are called, but few are chosen. But Lord, you have given him the wonderful opportunity to be an ambassador for you. Thank you, Father, for speaking to us from thy word today. Also, thank you, Lord, for uh, Nikita, <clears throat> um, who helped us with the worship also. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us from that wonderful songs. And also, from the wonderful word that Lord you shared, take up our mat and walk. So many times we're trying to do things on our own, Father. We want to we wanna put you aside and we want to do stuff. We want to achieve things on our own, Father. But, but Lord, as the psalmist says, train my eyes as, uh, as, as, the, <clears throat> as the other places we see to look unto thee, Father, because you are the author and finisher of our faith. It's not by our own efforts. Many times we want to do things on our own, Father. But help us as young people, as uh, I've been talking to so many young people for so many years, Father, many who decided to, <clears throat> oh Lord, serve you in their own strength. Many who have uh, tried to achieve things, tried to do things on their own, Father. But they are, Lord, when you are on our side, Lord, who can be against us, Father? Thank you for your word and thank you for uh, the testimony of my dear brother Tony also. Thank you, Lord, Father, that he made the commitment this year to go to youth camp and to be a part of this uh, fellowship also in Albany, uh, in this college and career group that we have here. And also, Lord, for all the youngsters that are here in my house <clears throat> and also for all the people who have joined today, Father. Lord, I pray that, Lord, in the days to come, you'll bless Tony with a wonderful job, that he'll also be able to testify in the <clears throat> uh, water baptism. And, Lord, let your grace be upon him and all the young people, Lord, all over the states that have joined today. Let your grace be upon each one of them. Lord, I know that you have a special plan and purpose for each young man and woman here, that they will be as lights shining in this dark world, as we see in Philippians chapter 2. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you have a purpose in, for every person here that is joined today. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you would bless each one of them until we meet next month also, Lord. Thank you for Abiana and Jordana's families. Let your grace be with each one of them and the church at Bethany. Let your grace be with all of us, Lord. And Lord, I give you, giving all this wonderful young people into your hands. Let your grace be upon us. Keep us safe. And Lord, if you're coming in Starid, we'll meet again next month, O Lord. Asking these few things in the most holy and highly exalted precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Praise the Lord, everyone. Meanwhile, we all pray for each other, love one another as God gave us a command. So until we see we will continue to pray for each other. Thank you. God bless you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, all. Thank you, all. Thank God you. bless you. Thank you.